Welcome back to uh, the show, everyone. Always a pleasure to see our next guest, although he's been avoiding us because we are the hard-hitting journalists. That oh, he I know. Fears. He's always scared of our questions because <laughs> we're so smart. We're joined now by uh, Mayor Gregor Robertson. How are you? Excellent. Hey, Gregor. So, how's the city? <laughs> <laughs> Thumbs City's up. City's doing great. Now, we've got a lot to talk about today, and first and foremost, we wanted to talk about Vancouver having a little bit of a birthday. This How is the old year. are we, and what's going on? We're 125 years old this year. And we have a big birthday party on April the 6th, which yeah. is the official day they signed the papers and incorporated the city 125 years ago. And then we. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we have uh, a big summer party too, summer party in Stanley Park. Nice. That is cool. That'll be a couple day festival as well. So there'll be Jackpool Plaza here right next to you guys on the birthday, on April this 6th. This has turned into such a good celebration site downtown. I mean, obviously with the Olympics and the Paralympics and everything, but I mean, going forward as well, they've had some great events yeah. in there. Yeah, and there can be more. You yeah. know, it, it isn't as active yet as it needs to be. Yeah. Can we so light the torch on my birthday? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> no, but grand. you know what? It is so nice when it's been lit on the occasions that it has been since the Olympics. It's just such a special thing. We're going to spark it up yeah. for 125. Will it? Will That's it? the plan. Yeah. Nice. Excellent. Spark it for 125 uh, and have a big party there. And lots of other parties all over the city for for the celebration year. We've got we did grants to lots of community organizations to have celebrations and mark the cultural diversity of the city because yeah. it's 125 years of so many cultures. So. I think it'll be fantastic celebrating all through the year. How much have you actually learned about the city? I mean, because the fascinating part of your job is, you know, I think everyone knows a little bit of the history of the city, but I would think in your position, uh, a lot of people would be on hand to be able to tell you a lot of really interesting facts and you would have yeah. access to them as I, well. That's the best part of my job is being to going around to all different events at the city, getting to know different little communities. Yeah. All the diversity of Vancouver, it's stunning. Yeah. I, you know, I've, I'm born and raised around here and it's, uh, always a surprise every day discovering new elements of our city and and uh, that's for people to get to explore and and see more of that is uh, something I would encourage well, everyone to do. Since you're the font of knowledge about all things uh, <laughs> I have a question I always have questions about the bike lanes but there's one thing about the bike lanes that uh, all of us this. were yeah. talking about this morning because downtown uh, there are the green zones, bright green yep. zones. We're looking at one right now. Yep. What, when that what is, are they? What do you do in the green zone? Is that for the bikes? Like if you're in a car, do you like what happens? If pedestrians, can they use it? What are those for? It, so basically, those are to alert everyone else that that's a bike lane, and uh, other cities around the world have used this. The most dangerous places for pedestrians and bikes are intersections, yeah. right? Obviously, uh, we by putting this bright green paint there just alert the drivers in particular to watch out for bikes. So basically. it's just a warning. It's a, it's a warning. It's kind of proactive. Uh, it's nice to have a little more color on the streets yeah. as well. But uh, it just makes sure that people take that extra bit of attention to look out. There's still a real ongoing debate uh, about the bike lanes downtown as well. How much of your philosophy is, is just people will adjust? Uh, and they'll get used to it. Well, definitely that is happening and it will continue to improve as, as more people uh, adjust where they drive, adjust whether they drive, because yeah. we're seeing, we've seen a 15% decrease in the number of cars downtown over the last 15 years. Cars are, are fading as people choose transit and bikes and walking. Well, the parking is so, up there now and it does deter some people who can to, to take transit or maybe ride their bike if they're close. That's right. And uh, so a lot of people that are, obviously if you're closer, walking and biking becomes a significant uh, yeah. option. Transit is increasing. We saw a big boost in transit coming out of the Olympics. A lot of people for the first time Got took used it, to it and then they kept taking transit. Yeah. So we're seeing people choose not to drive more and come downtown which is creating other challenges like there's way too much parking downtown now there's tens of thousands of parking spaces underground that aren't uh, Are you, you know why it's, too, it's too cheap downtown to park that's the <laughs> is there going to be more bike racks cuz i know in the summertime yeah. i'm kind of mike is a, a commuter on his bike i'm more of a pleasure rider but coming downtown in the summertime it seemed everybody was doing that and there wasn't necessarily enough bike racks so are there going to be more coming soon well there's been a whole bunch along those bike routes the separated yeah. bike lanes and that was that was part of the the trial is to put all those facilities in place and see how they're used and you see them used a lot like in the Dunsmuir bike lane by BCIT there at Seymour 
You see that fill up with bikes now on yeah. a regular basis. Which is so a good sign. It's yeah. a good sign. People are, are choosing to use bikes and making it safe is really the bottom line. Yeah. Many people wouldn't ride downtown historically because it's a free-for-all and yeah. having separated lanes is what all the great cities in the world are doing now to basically give bikes their piece of the pie. We yeah. have sidewalks, we have streets. Yeah. And bikes uh, don't really fit on either. My of those friends ones. love to debate me about this, but uh, the sense of safety as a guy who rides his bike into work almost every day, the sense of safety that you get from having a separated lane is invaluable. And if it saves one life, exactly bought and paid for. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean on that? And and that's a hard argument to to go against. It really is. It is, and it's also about allocating the space uh, equitably. So we, we have in the West End and Kits, we have about 15, almost 15% of people ride bikes to commute. Yeah. But we have had... 3% of the infrastructure is dedicated right. to bikes, so well, it's, and you it's trying to even that out. the Olympic Village into that as well, mm -hmm. and we've been talking about that a lot lately. We had Bob Rennie on the other day, and first of all, uh, how happy were you to hear the sales figures? <laughs> so after, what, what is uh, happening? Of course, after Bob, did Bob told us he made a, an announcement that the sales went great over the yeah. first weekend, but what is happening? What's going to be the future for it? Well, the, the near future is lots of people moving in, and that's what we need. That the village is a fantastic development. It's beautiful, yeah. and I, I think everyone agrees on that. Yeah. We need it full of people and lively, and the commercial areas uh, occupied. Uh, it's going to be an, an incredible legacy for the city over time. The, the market impact uh, was devastating for the village, and uh, we're just coming out of that now. It's great to see sales that uh, yeah. Bob Rennie and his team have pulled through. And, uh, well, and we, see we some of that to, debt coming down on yeah, the other side of it, right? We, I mean, we it's need to, for It's going to take some years. It, there's, a, you know, this 450-odd units there that uh, yeah. were not sold as of a couple weeks ago, and looks like 100-plus may be uh, sold now out of that bunch. Yeah. But we're talking about hundreds of uh, very valuable units that mm -hmm. will take yeah. several years to sell. So it's going to take some time, well, and we'll do some rental in the meantime. That's the, the goal of uh, Ernst & Young, who's the receiver, to, to balance out the rental and sales to try and maximize the return for taxpayers. Yeah, it's going to be a vibrant part of town. I, I, I just I don't doubt that at all when it all comes together. Uh, we want to talk about one other thing that's really exciting. Uh, and people really haven't heard a lot about this, uh, I think, in the city, but they're sure going to if everything works out tomorrow for uh, the Women's World Cup coming yeah. to Canada, and specifically... So exciting in Vancouver this is gonna be an incredible event it is soccer is the most popular sport in Vancouver and you in terms play of soccer. who plays I play and women's soccer is huge here and Canada yeah. is one of the top teams in the world they'll be in Germany this summer for the yeah. women's World Cup and we're the last finalist the Zimbabwe dropped out. Uh, <laughs> so there's no one left, so we're going to speculate that FIFA yeah. will announce but tomorrow you, that we get it in 2015, it is it? It looks like uh, almost a sure bet. <laughs> <laughs> I love that we still have to wait. That's even though so everyone Canadian. Else, yeah. and we uh, think we'll get it. But, I mean, uh, this is, uh, like you said, I mean, it's the most popular game in the world, mm -hmm. and uh, the Women's World Cup, I mean, obviously, you know, elite athletes all the way yeah. along. This is a huge event for this city. It, it will be great. 2015, so we have to wait four years years from this summer yeah. to gear up for it. Uh, we'll have a, a tournament in the meantime. I think it's a U19 Women's yeah, World Cup. that comes with the, yeah. uh, the, the sort package of deal. That's your warm up and then you have the yeah. big tournament. So we, um, I mean, we had the uh, the men's U21 mm -hmm. a couple years ago that was fantastic in yeah. Canada and we hosted at Swan Guard. Yeah. Hopefully we're in the big new stadium for I the think, final. I, I think yeah. I could even guarantee to you that it'll be so, ready by 2015. Oh, yeah. uh, would you like to still <laughs> be Fiona. mayor in 2015? Are you, are, you, are you out of the job? Are you That's, sick of the job uh, yet? No, I'm, I like this job. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a wild ride, a lot of fun, yeah. and uh, very challenging. I'm running again in November, and that... I don't think that gets me to 2015, though. Yeah. So, uh, what do they do? Three-year terms elections. for civic? It's three-year terms. Three-year yeah. terms, yeah. So yeah. It's coming up. Well, well Gregor, yeah. thank you so Thanks, much Gregor. for taking the time. And we yeah. wanted to tell you that Vancouver is 125 years old, and there's going to be a big birthday party happening, as we were talking about, live at Jack Pool Plaza. That's going to be happening on April the 6th, 2 till 9.30. There's going to be a ton of stuff going on around town over the next while, so you can go to celebratevancouver125.ca for all the information about all the events. Yeah. Tons of fun stuff. Yeah, another great one called Summer Live will showcase Vancouver's vibrant art scene uh, through a free multi-stage celebration in Stanley Park July 8th to 10th. How much fun is it going to be to go down there and wander around and be inspired by our citizens? It's just fun thinking about citizens. we're going to have summer soon. I know, I know. It's Thanks, Gregor. Gregor, thank you, man.